about their season leadership. And then they have a guy that no one else in college lacrosse has in Brendan O'Neill from a talent perspective. Could see an outstanding matchup right here at this faceoff dot. Luke Weirman, who was sensational in Maryland's first round win against Princeton, taking on Jake Naso and Duke wins possession off the opening faceoff. And that's huge for Naso and Duke because Naso was nicked up late in the season, missing some, some reps. But he's also assisted by an outstanding wing player in Tyler Carpenter, 33 in white. On his stick quite a bit in making plays. And his emergence is huge down the stretch. Weirman, he can shoot. Steady dishes it off. And Jameson had to make the save on Kelly's rib. Weirman stays in. At least till all the substitutions take place, including Eric Molliver here for with the ball. They're gonna have a bigger body with help coming. But O'Neill understands that. That's where that team wants him to go. So he plays a little bit of that cat and mouse game in terms of giving them a look at the underneath, but then coming back over the top where he's so lethal with that hammer of a shot. Big GB by AJ Lark, and they love using him. That LSM on the wing for face-offs for that very reason. In the nation in Duke. Yeah, look at the shooting percentage. So much better. You think about what Weirman was able to do. He was dominant. He's off to a good start here. He can shoot two, and he scores! Kark, how many times have we seen it over the years? When Maryland needs a spark, 52 is there to provide it. Last week off the face, it was his passing. He was getting teammates involved with assists. This time, he's the goal scorer. You don't want to slide off 52, he'll make you pay. We've seen it time and time again, the evolution of the face-off position with the goal scorers. Will Lynch with a similar G in the first game for Notre Dame. Luke Weirman cashes in. So the Terps' first goal of the day comes from the face-off man. Far from a faux go, he'll stay on and provide offense instantly, and he did there. Now the battle for the ground ball. It'll be won once again by Larkin. These two Fogos, Naso and Weirman, no players from their schools have been as battle-tested as these two. Four-year starters taken so many critical draws and big spots. The issue with Naso is he's not at 100%. We saw him injured in April and he's never had the, the full assortment in terms of his, his overall face-off play because of the injury. And we're a piece of it and it jettison the ball straight up into the net. Either way, as we get close to the two minute mark right here, Naso gets a much needed face-off win after the loose ball hold. And Duke has been efficient. He mentioned the zero turnovers on defensive pressure. 208 career goals. Horn sounds ending what was a very fruitful first quarter for the Duke Blue Devils. When it comes to shooting percentage, the only team better, guess who? Notre Dame. They make it count. That's why... I said at the end of that first quarter, that turnover was huge because John Tillman knew exactly what he was staring at, giving Duke the ball again. Can Maryland get one back here quickly? Weirman's doing yeoman's work at the faceoff dot. McDonald will take the shot and it's high. A little off on that one. Syracuse's 16th of the year. And Weirman has now won six of nine face-offs. He's doing all he can do now to keep Maryland in this game. Trailing by three here in the early going in the... Got a late hit against Jake Wilson. He'll serve that penalty, so the goal is good. And the Terps will be up a man for a minute. This is huge for Maryland because you, you weathered a storm. Maryland has not been good in the first quarter this year. They're minus two and a half on the season.
Barr picks up the loose ball and gets possession to Duke. He tries to shovel it forward to Henry Barr. Now it's a loose ball situation. Picked up by Maryland. You know, when you think of this contest, we mentioned Luke Weirman could be a huge X factor and Logan McNaney. But you also have to play really smart look as a team after losing four straight. I thought they looked really good last week against St. Joe's. Weirman again, and he scores again. We talked about it during the break, Clark. He's giving Maryland every opportunity to stay in this game. He scored two goals. He's winning the battle at the faceoff off. They just got to take care of the ball and be more efficient on offense. They have seven turnovers today. What of a cross player. Scored in the first quarter with his right hand. This time he sees a seam in the alley to go left. Win it, go righty, go lefty, keeping your team in it. A lot of times in NCAA tournament play, you rely on senior leadership to get it done. Luke Weirman is doing his part. The rest of the team needs to rally behind 52 and black. Well, it was three to nothing in this game. Weirman scored eight seconds after the Blue Devils made it three to nothing. He just scored eight seconds after slow score. Well, we talked during the break. Maryland could be in this game. It's the turnovers that are killing them. They had six in the first quarter. When you talk to John Tillman, that's one of the first things he says about the up and down play of the Terps in 2024. The turnovers. Defense, Maryland's down three, and probably the biggest reason is Luke Weirman. He's won eight of 13, and he's got a couple of goals. He's the most prolific face-off specialist in Maryland lacrosse history, but he's also a dandy of a lacrosse player who can score with the right hand. He can do it with the left. He's the ultimate weapon for John Tillman. He was an under-recruited player out of Westchester, Pennsylvania. Originally committed to Fairfield University. It was a coaching change there. John Tillman came in, swooped him up, and he got better and better every single year. Coming out of the timeout. Maryland, big possession. Weirman's given them opportunities to put together some sort of a run here. Maryland isn't beating you one-on-one -on -one right now. You created offense for the Terps. Two in a row for the Terps. Chorus tracks down the GB in the middle of the field. Weirman stays on. Gets it back to Chorus. Now he'll check out. Mott. The lead is three. Naso and Weirman. You don't see this very often in today's game. A stalemate. You get a hold. Loose ball hold goes against Maryland. Can Duke find another one here in the final 15 seconds? We'll get a timeout from Coach Danowski. What a turning point early on in this game, Clark. I mean, you had Maryland with the momentum, the chance to get to with those defense. So Mike Pressler, who runs the New York Atlas as the coach and GM, he has he has some tools to play with in terms of where he wants to flex Tyler Carpenter. Weirman and Naso. We expected a big battle, and it has materialized. Weirman has a 9-6 advantage. Make it 10-6 as we start this second half. He's got the 10-6 advantage, but when you score goals off of the... Danny Maltz, mustache and all, pounds that corner. He's 24th on the season, second on the day. Maltz missed a couple of games as well on the year, so getting him back in 100% is big. Another face-off win for Maryland. McDonald now. Back to weird buzzing against St. Joe's. I think a hard one to put a finger on too is Syracuse against Denver yeah ball movement offenses don't rely heavily on dodging ball moves at hyperspeed with both of those units interesting face-off matchup yep. there too a two-headed monster with Syracuse against Athicus and Denver another face-off win for Weirman Maryland just cannot get this thing down to within one goal this final two minutes this third quarter is important on the season card and it's huge and at 114, here we go again with Weirman. Possession again to Maryland. 
Shot clock not a factor. Learman is 13 of 19 on the game. One monster goal by Brennan. Getting dominated at the faceoff X. So Maryland's turnovers are leveling the playing field. If you're Maryland, you're dominating the faceoff X, and you're saying to yourselves, if we didn't turn the ball over, this would be a completely different game. They're allowing Duke to get dominated at the faceoff X, but still fielder throughout the course of the year. It is a one goal game for the first time since it was one to nothing. Duke on top in the first quarter. They needed Syracuse to step up huge in the six on six set. He's the one player that's getting separate. And look at the stands if you can get a shot at it. After we get possession here, big battle in the middle of the field. It's going to be won by Maryland. The F Maryland fans are all on their feet on one side, and the Duke fans in blue are all sitting down. This is why you did not want Maryland to hang around. Look at that shot. That is telling right there. Maryland the has field. Luke Weirman, Cotter. This is why you did not want to get into a slugfest in the fourth quarter. Flag on the field at the 10-16 mark. The fans are into it. And the Duke fans are shell-shocked. They don't know what's happened. McGuire picks up that GB. Duke needs a goal in the worst way just to get things back on even keel here. They have one in the second half. It's a Dyson Williams goal off a scramble on a blown clear. On a pass from Aiden McGuire. Clark, we've asked the question so many times this year, why does Duke go into these fouls if you're Maryland? That's their one massive mistake in the second half. You can't leave these inside guys under five seconds, under no circumstances. Let the guy who has the ball win his matchup. Balsamo wasn't beating the shorty there. Loose ball push against Duke on the faceoff. We are all knotted up at 10. Too much. Maryland, the big story in this game coming into this fourth quarter, the turnovers that they had committed in the first three, 16 turnovers through three quarters. They've only committed one here in the fourth quarter, and it's been a huge difference. And Weirman continues to win faceoffs. He's now won 17 and lost only eight. It's been a big advantage for the Terps all game long, and it's allowed them to stay in this game and to forge this scant one goal advantage. We knew. <laughs> we got a, we got a this game is, here, this man. Is great. 11 to 11. Six and a half to go. Two veteran faceoff men giving it everything they've got, knowing the season is on the line. Loose ball hold goes against Maryland. Can Duke make it two in a row and retake the lead? Back on top. Naso's going to have to dig deep. Too quick. The faceoff violation gives it back to the Terps, who scored on their last four shots. 18 of 27. Jake Naso from St. Anthony's doesn't get it. Weirman gets the gets possession. Now, if you're Maryland, you want to run some of this clock and get a good look late in the shot clock. Do you not, Cart? Yes, and you have to have backup. No chance at a run at championship weekend. There are probably people watching this game in the second quarter that thought there was no chance for a run at championship weekend. Never count John Tillman out. Seven goals scored by Maryland in the fourth quarter alone in this game. They have completely taken over. Congratulations. We'll see you in Philly, Coach. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Go Terps. Let's check out today's player of the game. It's brought to you by Capital One. It's Luke Weirman. You mentioned it, Clark. 20 of 29, two goals. He kept him in it. Break out the buzzsaw. He put on a clinic. The most prolific face-off man in Maryland history. It wasn't just about winning the draws. It's about creating offense. Cutting into that lead. 52 in black was magical. 
You know, you think about this team at the half, he had two of their five goals. I mean, he was everything that kept them in the game. He was the reason why you knew, even when they were down by three and they weren't playing well and they were turning the ball over, Luke Weirman was the X factor. No stranger to championship weekend, 52 in black, goes back. The Terps are headed back to championship weekend. They'll join the Fighting Irish earlier today. Notre Dame got the win over Georgetown. So two of the four teams are known to us. Notre Dame and Maryland. Tomorrow